All right, welcome in. Pretty Bad Sports Podcast, episode number 33. Shout out to Larry Bird, the legend. Um, in this episode, we are going to talk about the college championship, and then we are going to talk some UFC, and then we're going to talk about uh, the official kickoff to golf season in the uh, Masters Tournament. So I'm here with my two co-hosts. We got Money Michael, and we got Mr. Pick Flair. Fellas, how are we feeling today? Looking right as ever, baby. Oh. I like how I like how we got you know some golf attire for today's episode. We're gonna cover some master stuff, and we're looking like we're about to play eighteen. Yeah. You wanna go play eighteen, dude? Fuck this. That would be that would be pretty bad. Honestly, I'm in. Might throw Let's my go. back out first swing of the year, but fuck it, right? Let's go play. You guys are talking about disc golf too, right? Master's got us all excited <laughs> about golf, that's for sure. But let's start off with the uh, the championship game. We got San Diego State versus uh, UConn, fellas. What do you guys think about this this game? It was a pretty good one. You pick Flair, man. This is why we call you Pick Flair, right, brother? True. You're the I man. This show, uh, does this show up right here? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. There we go. Oh, yeah, baby. What's going down? What? Shout, out to, shout out to Pick Flair because as we've uh, continued to do this show, um, we started with NFL Talk, and he was very early on the Chiefs. He picked the Chiefs. They won the Super Bowl, and he uh, he successfully picked UConn to, before the tournament even started, he picked them to win it, and he, again, is a, a fucking champion. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this, all right? I'm going to make a promise to New England. A promise. Okay. If Joel Embiid wins MVP and the Philadelphia 76ers win the NBA championship, I am going to come on here once a week and personally pick the Red Sox to win the World Series, okay? <laughs> to, make, to, to make it back for all the shit that I've done New England, New England over the I'm last I'm going to be year. honest. If, if Joel Embiid gets MVP and the 76ers win the NBA championship, pick Flair, you fight. Yeah, you're out. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm getting sick of myself at this point because I only half these picks. I'm like just trying to be, you know, not a homer. Like, I, right, you know, they're pretty good. Like, I just don't yeah. want to be picking the Patriots, but I try to like, you know, look into like what team do I think if I'm not a Patriots fan or if I'm not a Celtics fan, who am I looking at? And like, I gotta start just being a fan. I think again, dude. I gotta get away from this fucking analytical Patriots bullshit. Fan boy. <laughs> Mac Jones is the greatest quarterback we've ever seen. So Mike, um, I have a question for you. Yeah, hit me. What you're 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 a basketball guy, right? So what made UConn that much better than everybody they faced in this tournament? They literally handled like everyone. Every single game they won the whole all tournament. their games by double digits, I'm pretty sure. I think they won every the single lowest, game by double The lowest margin was thirteen and it was hey. in the final four game. Yeah, I mean, I think we talked about this last episode. They're deep, bro. Deep. They can go, they can go eight, nine guys deep. Got a seven foot center off the bench. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sonogo is just a problem in the post. I really watched him yesterday, and he just—you can't stop that man. He's got two, three guys draped all over him. He's getting boards over everyone. Good rim protection, and then uh, Hawkins, absolute sniper. Whenever he—I feel like every time he shot the ball, it went in. They're just a deep, solid team. Got some with weird not one form, star, form. but just like five or six good, solid players. Mm-hmm. Underrated, yeah. like, role player for them, too, Cal Katera, bro. He sh- showed up and stepped up randomly. I think in the first half last night, he was like four for four from three or something like that. One of those guys, though, that like kind of like, um, kind of like that girl from the LSU team who like had 17 points, like the entire tournament up until the championship and then hit like fucking six threes in the championship. Yeah. Like guys like that, again, guys and girls like that, that show up in crunch time. Mm -hmm. That's what championship teams have, dude. Like it's not always going to be your starting point guard. That's going to be running all through the championship for you. Like you need those role players off the bench and Calicut's era, bro. I didn't see many times that he came on the floor that he didn't make an immediate impact. He's a he's right. a sniper as well. Yeah, I mean, they only made six threes yesterday. I mean, they shot 43% from the field. What won them that game yesterday was their defense. They held San Diego State to 32% from the field, only 26% from three. So they just suffocated that team. They there was a stretch in the- points at half or something like that? Yeah, there was a stretch in the first half. They held San Diego State almost 12 minutes without a field goal. 
it was they were just suffocating them completely. Just their big solid team just got good role players, man. That's what won them the championship was good solid defense and and a good coach too. Team. I think I think that we got to give this coach some credit. He's really yeah. uh, built the culture over there of UConn basketball. I mean, they seem like they're gonna be. You know, a team that's probably able to recruit some more top dogs over there. You know what I mean? That's usually what happens um, when you win the championship is people want to play for that coach. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how I mean, many he's of those a guys. coach, too. This is yeah. His dad's well-known. And his brother, right? Brother too. His brother, too, yeah. And he was brother talking too, last yeah. night about how they were hard on him. And he was like, I never yep. knew if I was going to get my own legacy. You got it, buddy. Mm-hmm. Yes, he did. I think they're going to be, like, the same type, like, I don't know how many of those guys are going to go pro or if any of them's going to declare for the draft. Like, they might run it back with those same freaking team. I'm trying to look. The only one I could see, I mean, Jordan Hawkins, maybe, sophomore, and then Sonogo is a junior. Hmm. Uh, but they could easily run it back with the same team and then I put them right at the top again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, they took out Gonzaga, who was the highest scoring offense. They literally just shut them down. Like, that's where, like, defense can still win championships at, like, the college level. Like, they yep. fucking – they make Gonzaga look like a freshman team. And they're basically yeah. – what have they had fucking Timmy for 10 years? Like, I mean, years, yeah. <laughs> a lot of people were betting on Gonzaga that game. And I was just like, dude, I just don't see if, – if Timmy was, like, a, a stud – like some like NBA, we know he's going to be a stud in the NBA. I would have given them a lot more credit in that game. I just didn't see that from him. And they just, they dominated. They did exactly what, exactly what I thought against Kazaga. And they did it all the way through the fucking tournament. Yeah. All the way through. Well, Crazy. They only got, it was only San Diego State made one run. And they got it to like five or six. And it felt yeah. like it was still like 15, like it was like a 15 point deficit. Like there was no right. shot San Diego State had any chance of winning that game. Right. Yeah. So that congrats to you from basketball. Yep. Go Huskies, baby. Woo! Um <laughs> cool. five and oh in the national about. championship. Yukon Huskies. Oh, that, five and that, that's that's dominant. That's a something like they did? Did? Five three trip. in the last like ten years. Kemba, Shabazz. Ninety nine. Yeah, Kemba. Ninety nine, oh four, and then Kimba and Shabazz were eleven and fourteen and then twenty three. Yeah. So ninety nine, oh four, eleven, fourteen, and two, and twenty three. Like that's, that's, that's pretty solid. Man. That's really yeah. impressive. Especially for a team, dude, they were like their road to get back to just the tournament was tough. They were fucking terrible. They started yeah. out the year this year fourteen and zero. And that was after they weren't even ranked preseason. And then they lost yeah. six out of their next eight. And yeah. then they went on a run again. And once they hit the tournament, it was just like all gas, no breaks. We learned from our mistakes. We lost six out of our last eight. We get back to playing ourselves. That's what the coach was saying. Like, they just have to play their type of basketball. And no one was beating them. And he was fucking right. No one even came close. It was really impressive. They, no one came close, man, like you just said. Just dominated every team. Winning by double digits in every fucking tournament game. Like, I've never seen it. I feel like I've, I've never, never seen, seen that. that. Yeah. That's they insane. walked off every game. They dribbled out the score clock in every single game, and you don't see that. You 13 was the closest, that. and that was Miami. Tournament, you know what that's I mean? Because, like, anybody can win in these. You see huge upsets um, every single time that this turn, every year this tournament happens. So, for a team to just coast their way through and literally dominate every single fucking opponent was, <laughs> was mm -hmm. impressive, dude. Yeah, imagine being like, yeah, we were a little nervous at one point when we were up by six. It's like, dude, <laughs> yeah. like you were up by six also for like 30 seconds. Then they just literally closed the door, and that was the end of the game. Yeah. Like, I remember seeing the San Diego State fans, like, after they made it to like six, oh, fucking high-fiving and shit. I'm like, you guys are down six right now to like the most dominant team. What are you happy about? Like, oh, and Buried a fucking three from like 25 feet, just off a nice curl, just buried it. Get it back up to nine. I'm like, this game's over. Looked like Mikey at fucking men's league, baby. That was literally like me coming off a little floppy screen from Patty. I was getting yeah. the assist. Wait, right you want to use me? Pocket. Use me. Floppy screen. A little dig no, there. Baby. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. All I heard was three points. <laughs> All I heard was. <laughs> 2023. National champions, congrats to UConn. What's there? 
Let's go. Very nice. Nice. Um, Very nice. So we move on to uh, UFC. Did you guys? Did you guys want to do anything else with uh, the college hoops? Let's just let's shout out LSU real quick too, just because the oh, LSU okay. women's the women's team. Okay. I, I there's not many. Listen. There's not many women's basketball games that I watch. I will say I watched this Caitlin chick a couple times throughout the year because as a UConn fan, I was born and raised in Connecticut. That's why I'm a UConn fan. And Paige Buchers last year was, she tore ACL this year. She didn't get to play in the tournament. UConn was out, I think, in the Sweet 16, so I stopped watching. But this Caitlin chick reminded me of her because every couple years now, you're seeing a girl that goes through this tournament and can just shoot from everywhere like she's, you know, the second coming of Steph Curry and in, you know, not to talk shit, but in women's basketball, like they don't play defense the way that the NBA and men's basketball has adjusted to the three point ball yet. They, they, they're not, they're not there. So if you can shoot from all over the court, this girl single-handedly was doing to teams, what UConn was doing to teams. She was dominating yeah. through. And then because LSU you know, came in and fucking shut her up. College game ever, or I'm sorry, the most co- women's college game ever, right? No, it no, beat out. no, most beat out watched a lot basketball of... game. She beat out NBA games. She beat out the really? 2021 finals. She beat out all st- like most Stanley Cup wow. playoff dude. That's it awesome. was apparently no, no, the good. most. Shut apparently, up. the most watched game for the NBA this year was Celtics Knicks some time ago. And her game beat that. That's awesome. Good for them. You know, I think that, um, you know, the women's basketball programs deserve some credit. You know what I mean? They don't usually get those oh, yeah. kind of buys on those big yeah. games. That's awesome to see for them. How soft is it that Joe Biden wants to invite both of them to the White House? Yeah. Everyone Not, gets yeah. a trophy, buddy. Everybody wins. Oh, just yeah, just, uh, but just because it's in women's, in like, what are you, you're trying to, you know, women's empowerment by giving a participation trophy to the team that lost? Like, I, I, don't, I just don't girl. understand. What's the one, what, what's that girl on that team where she's like, no, nah, we're all set. It's, you know, let LSU Bailey enjoy. Clark, she's the one that said yeah. that. She yeah, I like, like, she basically go. said, like, yeah, we, we, we like, the runners up don't, don't, uh, that does, that's that's yeah. not a thing. So. I loved her statement today for that reason and the fact that she came out and publicly said, yeah, this girl should, yeah, had her back because, dude, like, I mean, Portnite, shove a fucking stick up your ass, buddy. What are you calling her a classless? Caitlin, the whole tournament was fucking shitting on everyone, and he loved it. He was praising her yep. the whole time, day after day. And then this girl does it back to her while she's literally beating her ass in the championship. And this classless piece of shit is the exact quote that he said. What's wrong with you, man? Like, I'm not going to fucking make any assumptions or anything, but, like, that's just a terrible look for yeah. trying to bring trying to bring people to watch this sport that, like, it got exciting this year because of this girl. And, like, I get it. You want to defend her, and, like, you probably probably lost a bunch of money on the game or something. But, like, dude, classless probably. piece of shit. It's not like she punched the girl or spit at her. She did exactly what she was doing, and yeah. then she pointed to a ring. Was Aaron Donald the classless piece of shit when he sacked Joe Burrow and pointed to his finger? No stupid so good good shit to the lsu team like that was a tough and hard fought win and fucking you know i know a lot of people watched it a lot more than most years but uh, definitely brought a lot more fans to that that side of the sport this year let's hear it for the champs the lsu women's 2023 national champions congrats ladies yeah absolutely joe shiesty is proud of you (laughs) <laughs> all righty moving on i'm going to change my background real quick let's talk about beating people's skulls in in the ufc oh, let's uh, get it going. so we got some, good, <laughs> got some really exciting um some really exciting fights this weekend coming up so we're going to talk about a little bit of ufc we got Odessa, we got that matchup um pick flair why don't you break down what you're most excited about um i mean not to be cliche, but I'm most excited for the main event. Um, I know there's a co-main that's event in Masvidal and Burns that's good, but Israel Adesanya for the last like, five or six years when he came onto the scene, like people really just thought the style bender was unbeatable, man. No one could touch him. Dude, this this guy, Pereira, he, this guy, so I don't remember the exact, um, the exact like event that he beat him in, but it was like a Muay Thai or like kickboxing event. But apparently like years ago, this Pereira guy has given him trouble outside of the UFC. Then basically like, I know it was sounded like a villain origin story from what I was reading. This guy like beat him in there, then saw him balling in the UFC, 
made yeah. his way into his weight class to find to finally get a sh- uh, a shot against Adesanya, and then last night, dude, he beat the piss out of him last fight. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's gonna be a sick fight in my opinion. I'll be honest with you. I think Pereira does it again. I think he beats his ass again. I I don't think. Really, I'm going dial bender, baby. Go on, stop. <laughs> I'd I'd love to see it because I'd love to see a third fight. Um, it's just hard for me after that last fight to think that Izzy's got anything in his bag for this guy Pereira, who literally just like said, "I don't give a fuck about any of the styles you're bending. I'm just beating the piss out of you." So. We'll see, man. He he trains hard. He's big. He's aggressive. He's clearly got out of Sonya's number for, you know, years on years now. So going to be a sick fight. That's going to be my fight of the night for what I want to watch. But there's plenty of fights on there. This is a fucking sick card, dude. Masvidal yeah. on the second or, card. Yeah, Masvidal is always an exciting fighter. You know, the dude from Miami is a badass. He grew up always getting in street fights and shit like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Knuckle, crazy. baby. woo Yeah. He's pretty active on social media, so I think I'm excited to watch him. I think that him versus Gilbert Burns is going to be a really good match. Um, Gilbert Burns has only lost five matches. He's 21 and five. And then Masvidal, record's not as good. You know what I mean? He's got a lot of losses. He's got 16 losses, but I do yeah. think that this is going to be an exciting fight. I think these two are going to fucking throw hands the whole time. Yeah, Masvidal came onto the scene like, say, you yeah, R.I.P. Kimbo Slice, like. It just takes those type of fighters a little bit more to adjust to the UFC because it's a lot more technical. So yeah. you look at those losses and like if you know his background and you know how hard it is to make the transition from bare knuckle boxing in fucking Dade County, fucking Miami to <laughs> going into the UFC. Like I don't even hold the amount of losses really against him too no, much. No, he's a fighter. He just you know what I mean. He would accept him. Yeah. He is. I watched a great fight and a redemption fight for him, bro. Last time we saw him in the ring, unless I'm mistaken, he, he got cleft. clean he slept. And I don't think he'd ever been Wasn't like it Usman. It was Usman, yeah. Yeah, that's a Didn't tough he fight match, Kobe though. like shortly after that? I thought. I don't know if it was after or before, but maybe that did he fight? He's, I think he has one last. Yeah, wow, Mikey, good point. I don't think he's I won any of his so. last recent fights. Yeah, he's yeah, let's on find, a losing let's streak. Um, he's on a little losing streak, I thought. I watched a yeah, cool he's, documentary. He's on, it's a redemption on him. fight for him for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I watched a cool documentary on him growing up, and he was just obsessed with with the with the sport. You know what I mean? He was a troubled dude, got into a lot of trouble in Miami. He was literally living out of his car, and um, it's cool that he was able to turn it around. And I mean, he's he's really thankful for the opportunity he's got in the UFC. Yeah. He, you know, in the documentary, he takes care of a lot of his family. He, and stuff like he that. lost to Colby Covington a year ago on March fifth in a decision. Right, I thought so. Round five decision. Yeah, right. yeah, that was a decision. He got I remember locked that. up in that fight too. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, he got his face beat in. Um, you know, uh, another guy to watch out for on this card too. While you guys are looking up some some um, info on Masvidal, is uh, that dude uh, Kevin Holland? Um, he's going against. I, I'm not sure too much about this other guy. Um, Ponzinibbio. Definitely said that wrong. So if I said it wrong and you got something to say, fucking attack me, UFC fan. Come at me. <laughs> You know what I mean? We'll fucking swear up on the show. But anyways, um, this dude is 30 and 6, and he's fighting Kevin Holland, who's uh, 23 and 9. And um, he's one of those guys that came up on that UFC, um, what, is, what is it? Like the contender Ultimate series? Fighter. Yeah. Ultimate, Ultimate Fighter. Ultimate Fighter. He was yeah. on that show. And this dude talks a lot while he fights. It's pretty fucking dude, entertaining. It's one of my fun. favorite fighters to watch is Kevin Love Holland. That. I don't know if you guys follow yeah. him on Instagram. It's worth a follow. He's fucking hilarious, dude. Yeah, like, he, he he's a cool dude. I like him a lot. Yeah, he talks that, a that's going to be, I, I'm assuming that's going to be a good fight. Everything I've seen about that dude, Santiago, looks like he's he's going to put up a fight. And there Kevin is. Holland is like, I think he lost his last fight too. So did he? Yeah, that's, I think oh, so. Oh, but he took it on. He did take it on super, super, super short notice, though. I yeah. remember that. Is that against Somebody, uh, like Clock? Clock. And he's like, "Yep, the... man." It was. I think we watched it together. Oh I, think, I think. I think we watched Cosmat that or whatever. Was it that guy? Shemayev. No, he lost to Shemayev. September of last year, it was. He took that on. He took Stephen that on Thompson. Late, right? Stephen Super Thompson. Late. Super in, late in December. Out. Yeah. Um, I don't know too much about this matchup, but I'm looking at the card, guys, and uh, 
Who's Adrian? This is, could be stupid of me. You know what I mean? But uh, Adrian Yanez, he is 16 and 3. He's fighting against Rob Font. Um, Rob Font, and solid. That's going to be a tough fight. I don't know much about Yanez, but I follow Rob Font. He's he's pretty solid. I I think just the fact that it's a bantamweight fight and you know that high on the card, Not, it's yeah. got to be a it's got to be a bang session. It's got to yeah. be. Yeah, those are a lot of good fights here. You know those guys. You know what I mean? They're all athletes, but these dudes are fucking quick at that at that weight. Bantamweight is um, what is what what is that like one thirty or one forty or something? It's it's light. <laughs> it's lighter light, than me, light, boys. Light. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't fight in that. <laughs> it's light. Um, another exciting one, boys, is this dude, uh, Raw Rosas Jr. I'm not sure. Rosas. Rosas. There you go. Raul man. Rosas Jr. He's cool. Um, he's a young kid. Obviously, he's under 18 years old, right? Yep. I think he's, he's 17 or 18. Might have just turned 18. He's yeah, might young. be 18 now at this point. But this guy is... One of those up and coming fighters that you know what I mean. He was kind of dominating the level down from UFC. Got the invite to UFC. Um, we watched his his first fight. He he won that pretty quickly. Um, and this guy, I mean, this dude looks like he definitely could be one of the up and coming guys, man. Seven and zero mm-hmm. right now. Yeah, yeah, and he's fighting a fighter who's eight and one. Eight, yeah, eight and one, eight and one. So I mean, that should be a good fight. Should be a good challenge for him. And. You know, don't sleep on this preliminary card either, man. Don't sleep in on the pre- the prelims. I'll tell you, Gastulum, um, the middleweight fight against Chris Curtis, that'll be a pretty good fight. And uh, Luana Pinheiro. I mean, I, I watch a lot of these girl fights now for my own research. <laughs> it's a pretty good fight. Oh, shit. She's, 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 she's pretty bad. <laughs> Ooh, Pinheiro right here? Luana Pinheiro. I'll send you some links. Oh, she's ten and one. Got a nice little touch to her. It's all tush. Yep. Um, but yeah, so the prelims are going to be excited. The main card is going to be exciting. So we'll see. Um, one we'll see more exciting happens. thing about this fight: um, someone's making their debut in this fight. Um, as an analyst, Dustin Poirier is going to be on the on the bench with oh, the boys shit. as an analyst. Yeah, yeah. so that's going to be interesting that. to hear him. I'll be honest with you, I'm I don't know what to think of it because I don't think he's ever been the greatest like public speaker or anything or like quick witty. So I'm really interested to see how he is as an analyst because I think people like that. It's it's fifty fifty. He could be hilarious or it could be like super awkward. So what sucks for him too is all the analysts now on UFC are fucking ten out of ten. They're awesome. They're awesome. Yeah. That's I why I'm interested to see how it happens. Like, yeah, what's going to happen? Yeah, they all perform at such a high level. So, if Dustin Poirier struggles and sounds like a fucking idiot, he's gonna. It's gonna be pretty easily uh, to tell. Right? You know what I mean? It's gonna be like when they had Gronk as an analyst for like a yeah. half of a fucking day. Yeah, and they're they like, and him even, a commercial. yeah, even them, they're like, like, said Gronk, go get us a couple beers, buddy. Go hit the fucking, go hit the student <laughs> section. What are you doing? Yeah, well, we'll buy you a shaker, buddy. But why don't you get the fuck off the second, you stink. <laughs> um cool um you guys got any other any other ufc things that you want to fucking i just want somebody to get knocked the fuck out so i can fucking watch on twitter 400 times in a row that would be fear. pretty bad I'm just That'd i'm just pumped bad. to watch it man i'll be honest like even the fights that i don't see a lot of th- this card is huge to me i think it's the best card this year um in terms of like the hype leading up to it and the, and the rivalries and the the talent on Again, the preliminary card and the main card. But at the end of the day, I'll watch any card as long as people are beating the fuck out of each other. Let's get it yeah, going. He's growing on me a lot. I agree. Love it. Love it, dude. Um, I love it. So on a much lighter note, gentlemen. Um, see my background change there? <laughs> Let's talk about a little bit of, you know, a real man sport in uh, golf. Golf, baby. It's Everybody back. Loves some fucking golf. I have to put my Titleist hat on for this segment, but in my opinion, fellas, this is the official kickoff to golf. This is when, like, you're allowed to go to the range now from where we're from. We live in the, <laughs> Bo- the Boston area, so it's cold. Like, I think if you go to the range and play golf in general at all before the Masters, like, does it... I don't know. I hope you boys saved your yeah. PTO. We about to be golfing, boys. <laughs> Let's go. Hell yeah. <laughs> 
Um, you think Flair will be out of the office this coming Friday to play a little bit of golf with the boys? Nope. <laughs> Absolutely. Sorry, Henry. Sorry, Brendan. Um, but yeah, we got we got the uh, the Masters kicking off, and this is an exciting tournament. I think that this is one of those tournaments where you know, even not your your golf lovers, like you know, th- this is pretty. This is a pretty big deal, and I think that a lot of average fans watch the Masters. I think that this is a cool historical tournament. Oh yeah, Hell yeah, man. Oh yeah. I'll be watching the work on Thursday. Oh yeah. I was, I was yeah. gonna say, dude, this is like the number one tournament that everyone like if you work at a company that has Microsoft Teams, everyone's sending around the link to like the free like who's following Tiger and Rory, who's following yeah. Jason Day <laughs> and like, these ones stuff. like Oh yeah. If you if you work at a company that has a desk and you have multiple monitors, I'll bet my fucking masters. mortgage that one of those monitors is the masters this week. Respectfully, so. you know what I mean. Respectfully, so I'm still like, we're still doing work, still doing work yeah. while we're watching fucking golf. Absolutely, you know what yeah, I mean? absolutely. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, um, totally so, doing work this week. Mikey, you got a couple questions about your guy? Yeah, man. I'm curious what you boys think about uh, Tiger. Obviously, he's playing. You never know with this guy. I feel like every other fucking week, this dude's in a fucking accident for being too high behind the wheel. But he's playing. I mean, what do we, what do we expect out of this guy? Is he fucking Johnny Cashed, or does he got one more tourney in him? Because I, he's the one. Even though he still brings in the viewers, man, he's what made the the sport popular. He is the guy, and that's why I turn him. Because obviously, you got to see it. Like, what do we think? Does he still got it, or is he? What do you gonzo? think, Big Flair? I'll let you start. Yes. I think you got to, right? You got to respect the the goat. What are you, he's only I'm looking up at the odds right now. He's only plus 6000, which like the the top person is Scotty Scheffler at plus 650. Oh, there's a lot yeah. of people ahead of him. He's probably like the 20th like the person. Six, but you oh, know what's okay. more important? Tommy Fleetwood's even with him. Bryson DeChambeau's behind him. Justin Rose behind him. Patrick oh, wow. Reed like Abraham Answer, Siwoo Kim, like there's a lot of names in here. Bubba Watson's plus ten thousand. Like, wow, okay. there's a lot of names yeah. that they're putting. It's kind of the Brady effect, right? Like, yeah. one, he's not playing anything but major tournaments right now. He made that clear. So when he comes in, he's rested. the The problem he was having yeah. the last couple of years was his back was acting up every fucking time he yeah. got going, and he couldn't yeah. he couldn't hold it together. I mean, I couldn't imagine playing fucking what is it, 72 holes or whatever of golf with a hurt back like mm-hmm. three weeks after a fucking, you know, you drive your car into a fucking <laughs> middle of a highway. Like, I can't right? even walk 18 now and I'm fucking 28 years old, bro. Like, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm fucking taking the car and having fucking 25 high noons. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. I think mm-hmm. it's one of those things you, you toss a little bit of money on it with the friends because it's, you know, it's a good payout and you see what happens and you root for it. I, he realistically couldn't even make the final card though. Like, it's so 50-50 with him now. It's again, it's like if if, if Brady's on a wild card team next year, he comes back and he's on a wild card team, everyone's going to give him decent odds to win the Super Bowl cuz it's Tom Brady. Yeah. The same thing with I Tiger mean, Woods. Yeah. I mean, but this course, like he's got that experience. This course ruins people. We've seen what is it? Uh, the par 3 is it 12, right? The 12 with where everyone shoots it into the yeah. water on that par 3. That literally ruins people and he has that experience to know exactly where to put it. So like he can just like stay afloat, just par, par most of the holes, get a few birdies, and then let the field kind of shit their diapers. Maybe he has a chance. I don't know. I hope he does. He's got a chance. He's always got a chance while he's out there. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's the goat. Is that the whole Patrick's got in the background? Is that the par three right there? Maybe. Is that? <laughs> is I think it is. Yeah. That could be totally wrong. Is this where Jordan Spieth got absolutely haunted, or no? Uh, I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, put yeah, two in the water. The Masters, yep. he fucking he had a, he had the worst day of his fucking life at the Masters. That was yeah, crazy. Jordan few, Jordan Spieth is the uh, he's ranked yeah, five in odds right now, plus fourteen hundred. If yeah. you let me ask you guys something, if you guys were to win a million dollars to guess who wins this golf tournament, who would you bet on? You get one chance. You get one pick. 
<laughs> I'm going with John Ram. I feel like that dude's always in top five. Dog uh, shit, pick Michael. Dog shit. Always in top five. Hey, he's, he's third. He's, he's third, third ranked right, right now. Plus plus eight hundred. Yeah, let's let's Maybe. let's get the chirping going a little between us. Let, let's see. <laughs> let's see who wins on the show. Who's gonna pick the lowest score, Michael? Your pick's dog shit. That's what I'm gonna play. <laughs> Player, I'm gonna, um, I hope you don't pick who I'm going to say. I'm going with Rory. Oh, fuck you. Now I have to change mine. That's who you were going to pick? Because like, yeah. I just feel like I picked Rory for the last turn of the players, I think. And he didn't do as good as I thought he would. But he's just one of those guys kind of like fucking, you know, Justin Thomas, Morikawa, Tiger. They're just like when they're on, the no one's going to touch him. Yeah, I think he's the closest yeah. thing. To Tiger in, in, in golf, that's yeah. my opinion. As far as like, totally legend, agree. you yeah. know, and it's really just the dominance that comes with when they're on fire. Like yeah. when yeah. when when Rory is playing oh. at the top of his game, it doesn't matter if fucking Cameron Smith's at the top of his game. Yeah. He's not even going to be three like strokes. Rory too, like watching him as a golf fan is when he he plays like emotional, and I mean that in a good way. Like I like yeah. how he gets into it. I like how like. When he makes big clutch pots, he gets fucking fired up. Like, I like that. You know what I mean? I fucking yeah. love that in golf. But, Mikey, I'm sorry for shitting on you, John Ram pick. I was going to shit on pick players, too, but he fucking picked <laughs> who I was going to pick. So, I want to apologize to you on the show, you know? But well, he's uh, your pick, you fucking loser. Yeah, what do we got, yeah. brother? All right. You can't take mine. You shouldn't have let me go first. Shut up. It's my turn. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you better hide this guy from your wife because he's not only a winner on the golf course, but he's gonna. He's the type of guy that will steal your girl. I'm going with fuck the PGA. I'm going with the live guy, fucking Dustin Johnson, baby. He's going to go in and he's going to show everybody why he is dad. And he's gonna win the Masters this year. I like that. Yeah, I like That's that. A, yeah, yeah. He hasn't done much in a while, oh. but. I love no, it. but that's that's kind of like this I tournament. I feel no, like it is kind of always someone like that. Someone no. who's got fire. Yeah. He's mm -hmm. Plus plus twenty eight hundred. I might have to toss a little fucking pizza on that. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so the good oh, thing no. is that if you add the odds from me and Mike's picks. We're still less than what you picked, though. So you're a fucking idiot. Oh, go fuck yourself! <laughs> <laughs> um, so you go with the big box. Who won it last year? Even, who did win? Morikawa was two years ago, right? Or am I wrong? Scheffler? So Scheffler, Scotty Scheffler. Yeah, so that's why he's the favorite then. So he's Scotty been, Scheffler's plus six fifty. He's been on a tear for. He's been on fuego, right? Like he's pissing me off. Yeah. Who, who who's been on fire in live? Brooks Kepka. Oh, wow. He talks a lot of shit too, right? I need some fucking shit talking between these yeah. guys this weekend. Yeah. I need. I, need Yo, I want Brooks. I want Brooks and Bryson to fight. You guys want to know who my little dark horse would be? He's not necessarily too much of an underdog. I think he's really starting to heat up. But um, I think I like that dude. Uh, Will Will um, Taurus. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Caddy you like that. fucking Billy Madison's caddy, dude? Billy's caddy. <laughs> yeah, big Gilmore. Time. Sorry, dude. I fuck those yeah. movies up all the time. Happy Gilmore. Oh, God it. damn it. You kind of look like Tommy Fleetwood, Pick Flair. When I you look like Shane Tom. Lowry, and you know it. I think so. <laughs> Shane Lowry's the only Irish guy that I know on the tour. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> I think Shane Lowry is my dark horse, though. That guy, he had. Did he won? He didn't win the Masters, but he won a pretty big tournament like two years ago. British Open, yeah. Yeah, What's British wrong Open. With Bryson DeChambeau, why is he so low? He sucks. Yeah, dude. He lost his he's he lost dead. his hype. He can still whack the fuck out of the ball, but he's just not consistent, dude. I think Brooks yeah. Kopka getting in his head like for the last like two years. You know what I think really took his game down is when they fucking they squashed the beef. They should have kept it going. They should have yeah. kept going. Yeah, that's when DeChambeau was cool. Oh, uh, he was he was crushing the ball. Mm -hmm. And when he went to live, you know what's funny is that DeChambeau actually said that um it was on his Twitter the other day that Tiger does not fuck with him anymore ever since he went to live. He said that he doesn't answer his texts, he doesn't talk to him yeah, when they're fuck. in person. Basically wow. he said that said, DeChambeau? DeChambeau said that and what the consensus was, which here's here's the part where like I agree. 
I agree that the the jumping to live is kind of like it's immoral. It's not. It, it's a pride thing. It's like you guys it's are just taking it away. Sport too. It's such. Like, but there was a a gentleman's sport. There's ethics involved. Like all these things that like it's it's the opposite of jumping for money. But what what tiger, I guess they're making golf cool and everyone's jealous. They're partying. They're boozing. They're drinking. So, so here's the point, though. Just like you're fucking hitting birdies, kid. Like, is that and, and, and think about this. And this was, I guess, a point. Here, I got two sides to this argument, though, because apparently what DeShambo said is a big reason why Tiger was not a fan of it is because it could potentially taint his records. Yeah. I mean, I understand yeah, splitting up the records because the, some of those tournaments don't count or something, and like it splits the, to two leagues and it changes a bunch of dynamics to his records. But here's the other thing: no one's fucking touching your record. Shut the fuck up! Like no one's even right. close, dude. Like no one's close. So I think he's being a little petty, but I also think like he's the face of the PGA. He almost he really can't fuck with live at all. No, yeah. and I, I respect him for not selling out because obviously they probably would have offered that guy. Didn't they oh, offer him like yeah. seven hundred and fifty million, like something oh, about yeah. fucking rageous, and he said no. Yeah. Like I thought it was a billion. I thought they gave. I him thought it was, yeah. I thought it was deal. close to. A well, dude, million. PGA. I mean, they kind of caught themselves in a tough situation because now I don't know the numbers. So, but like now, all of a sudden, they're pay, they're finding more money to get these. Yeah, guys. ironically. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, here's you know. the thing. I thought that Mickelson, when he came out, he got dogged for a lot of the stuff that he was saying about the PGA. He's shooting I'll be honest with you. Fucking 77 making a fucking ton of money. <laughs> yeah, and I also think a lot of his complaints about the PGA were warranted. It's just, again, like, it's a pride thing. It's a gentleman's game. Like, you can't say those things and not expect to get yeah. dragged by all, like, Rory was pissing at him. T- Tiger was pissing at him. But, like... He wasn't wrong about a lot of what he was saying. It's just what professional league isn't corrupt. You know what I mean? There's some at some point they're they're screwing the players, they're screwing the game. There's some sort of corruption. It's just what what level can we deal with? You know what I mean? And I think in golf, we're not even close. To like, dude, sometimes I watch the NBA and I'm just like, I want to fucking never watch this sport ever again, or I just want to watch college. But yeah, in, in golf, it's like it's not that bad. I mean, I know there's more stuff going on behind the scenes, but Mickelson got dragged, dude. They dragged this man through the dirt on a chariot. It was it was gross. Loser. I love Mickelson too. He's one of my favorite golfers to watch. His Instagram is electric when he's just like, "Yeah, you ever want to fucking do like a 360 and then hit a golf ball from the sand into your mother's fucking <laughs> mojito? I got I got a fucking trick for you, buddy." And then he <laughs> just does it. And then he does it in one try. <laughs> like, ah, oh, shit, I hit the Mai Tai. Hold on, let me do another one. <laughs> it's like, fucking, he's amazing. I love him. But And then again, all of a sudden, Phil Mickelson's at your mother's cookouts. Yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, Didn't he gamble away a bunch of his money? Is, is, is he salty because he has no more money left, maybe? You wicked degenerate. Yeah. Yeah. He's in no, live, dude. He'll be fine. He's in live. Yeah. He's, he's now he's right. in live. Yeah, he'll be fine. Yeah, and he, he got all that money back. Yeah, yeah he's he definitely it. a big gambler. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Golf oh, Mickelson's in this. I didn't even know. I didn't know Mickelson was in this tournament. What is he way down? Is Plus twenty thousand. Oh wow. He's uh, he's got the same amount of odds as lit, Kevin right? Kisner, who I also didn't know. Wait a second, VJ Singh is still playing. Yep, VJ Singh plus one hundred and fifty thousand. <laughs> I see him at plus two fifty thousand. Really, damn. Fred Couples is still in it plus a hundred thousand. Fred Couples is still like alive. 90? Jesus, dude. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he can walk yeah, the I'll, course. I'll, I'll tell you what. <laughs> DJ Singh, I used to play fucking the PGA game on the Wii, the Nintendo Wii. You yeah, and I don't be Tiger in that game. Woods and I would only be Tiger Woods and I'd make my dad use somebody else. He would pick DJ Singh. I'm like, dude, who the fuck's this? Why would you pick this guy? <laughs> it doesn't sound like a golfer. You know what I mean? Why would you pick fucking this guy? Isn't he yeah, a lefty yeah. or no? Could be wrong. He's a righty. Righty. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot going through this whole list. There's a there's a lot on here that you know, yeah, lifetime, so makes sense, but I'm sure I don't think we're gonna see Fred Couples on the fucking final day. <laughs> Have you yeah, going to real? I think I took in one of the uh I do those um like pick six tournaments. 
uh, bracket things where you pick one from each tier. And I'm pretty sure last year I picked Fred Couples and I was like hammered. And then I fucking looked at it. I was like, why the fuck did I pick Fred Couples, dude? Like, <laughs> there's no, there's just no chance he can swing a club for four days straight anymore. He's too old, dude. Yeah. Not officially. I didn't, is he still alive? He's yeah. He's plus. I'm not kidding. He's plus a hundred thousand. <laughs> like he's on the he's on the fucking list. Oh, yeah, so this would be cool. Watch it. Can't wait. Yeah, well, if anyone has the link, cool. send it to send it to my email so I can watch it Thursday. You got watch. Microsoft Teams? I got Microsoft, Microsoft Teams, baby. I'll get you a link. I know a guy that knows <laughs> that just... guy that you don't know. <laughs> when does it start? Does it start Thursday? Thursday. Yep. Thursday. So tomorrow's the part three challenge. Yeah, yeah. And on Wednesday. Yeah, they do a part three challenge, right? Yeah, that's another day of PTO. Yeah. We'll be yeah, watching. exactly. Yeah, I'll be watching that too. Sorry, guys. Sorry, Brennan yeah. and Henry. <laughs> yeah no that's awesome it, it'll be good to get that going now that everything's kind of slowed down in the sports world for a little bit championship games just over we got a little stretch of like two weeks of you know i guess some would say insignificant games there'll be some games that'll be significant for teams that are kind of insignificant anyways but yeah. Well, we're getting in the final stretch here. We're gonna be we're gonna be in some playoffs for NHL and NBA. So this is always a really cool time of year where it's like, all right, let's take a little fucking a little break and let's watch some golf. Chilling. Golf. We're chilling, fellas. So any uh any closing thoughts, boys? This has been a great episode. You guys got anything else you'd like to add? We need to get on the fucking course ASAP now. I'm fired up to play some golf. I can't wait you. to slice my first tee shot into the Oh, lake. it's going to be, be perfect. Awesome. It's going to be can't awesome. wait for the first breakfast ball of the year. Yeah. Yep. Just the first glizzy on the woods again. The first glizzy and then a nice little Tito's lemonade. Maybe a double shot of Tito's, you know? Depends how the round's going, right? Yeah. I'm going to oh. chug a fucking half pint of Jaeger and then hit one 300 <laughs> yards. <laughs> 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 awesome. Well, hey. Everybody, thanks for tuning in. If you guys could do us the favor of just hitting that old like, maybe give us the subscribe. If for some reason you're watching and not subscribed, you're a loser. But, you know, make sure you subscribe, share the video, um, and we'll catch you guys next time. Deuces. See you later.